Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of the 1988 action crime procedural thriller Shakedown, starring Peter Weller and Sam Elliott. Now, Shakedown is a film that's all written and directed by James Glickenhaus, who before this had directed films like The Soldier with Ken Wall and a film called The Exterminator, starring Robert Kinty. Now, I would have to say uh, out of these three, three out of these three films, Shakedown is definitely my favorite. Um, those other films they have their moments, but Shakedown, it's a really fun movie. I, I, right from the beginning, it starts out with a great uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper song that plays uh, on a boombox to open up the film, and the song is uh, a cover of a Bob Dylan song, actually. It's a cover of Subterranean Homesick Blues. Actually, I think it was written by Bob Dylan, but he was it was an uncredited Bob Dylan uh, who was, uh, wasn't credited for doing this rap rock cover of one of his songs. So yeah, it's Subterranean Homesick Blues plays, and it's, it's actually a pretty catchy song. I, I like it, and so that's a nice, unique way to open up the film. And then after that, you have Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix. And when you see Peter Weller's character dancing and, and lip-syncing to Purple Haze, you know you're in for a good time. And it just gets better from there. Now, there are some elements to it that I think it's missing that could really honestly put it over the top and really make it a excellent film. A, a one of a kind film, uh, one of those movies that's a classic, but it's still a really good film in its own right, even though it's missing a few elements. Now, like I said, the film was also written by James Glickenhouse, and I think the story, the corrupt cops aspect of it, I like. Dirty cops is always something that gets me engaged because to me personally, there's not a better villain than a dirty cop. Because these are cops that are supposed to protect and serve. And when they're serving different interests and they're, become, they're being selfish and people are dying and they're not serving the public trust, then they're really despicable and you hate them. So it, it's I, I've seen this in films like An Innocent Man and so on with Tom Selleck. So this is always a good thing for me to see a, a film with corrupt cops and just to see them get their just desserts because a lot of times in real life a lot of these dirty cops they stay dirty until they retire and get their pension check um now some of them are caught but sadly a lot of dirty cops stay dirty and nobody knows anything about it so yeah so th that aspect of the script is good there's some really clever one-liners one in particular I love, uh, it's a scene where uh, Sam Elliott's character goes and interrogates this kid named Tommy, and he doesn't want to give him any information, so he slams him around and then slams him on to the windshield of a car, puts a gun up against his face and, say, and says, you know what this is? Uh, it, it, it's a gun, it's a gun, yeah, and you're a fucking genius, now listen up, the gun is clean. No serial number. So if I blow out what's left of your brain and chuck it in the East River, your case is closed. The people downtown are going to file you under DSAF. Did society a favor. Got it? <laughs> I love that line. That, that's the kind of thing I miss. I miss lines like this in movies, in theaters. I miss that so much. So many people nowadays consider it cheesy, whatever, teach their own. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. It adds to the fun of a film like this. I, and, and come on, that's infinitely quotable. I mean, that's a great line. DSAF, did society a favor. Um, and I honestly do feel that you should do yourself a favor and check this out, especially if you like 80s action and, and stuff like that, because there's a lot to love about Shakedown. Now, speaking of Sam Elliott, he plays, he's, he's in it, he plays Richie Marks, who's a cop, and he's buddies with Peter Weller, his character Roland Dalton, who's this hotshot lawyer, and I, I, 
I love these two together, but they aren't together enough. There, there's a lot of stuff that deals with Peter Weller and his story, and it feels like there isn't a lot devoted to Sam Elliott. It's like Sam Elliott shows up every now and then, either to save Peter Weller's ass, or to team up with Peter Weller in some exciting fun action sequences. And it, it's just... If you saw the trailer, you think that it's a buddy cop film featuring these two, and it really isn't. So if you're expecting that, it's going to be a little bit disappointing, and it was a little bit, but I still enjoyed the film a lot, because when these guys are together, they're great, they have a great rap rapport with each other, the, 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 the chemistry is electric, and it just makes me want to see these two guys on screen more than they are. They, they steal the show when they're on screen, and they're just not on screen enough. And it, it, the film devotes a lot of its time to this uh, procedural drama that isn't as interesting or as much fun to watch as the stuff with Sam Elliott and Peter Weller. Being vigilantes and going after the bad guys. You also have Patricia Charbonneau, who plays Susan Cantrell, who is an assistant DA, who is an ex-girlfriend of Peter Weller's, and she was in RoboCop 2 as an uncredited role as one of the technicians who worked on RoboCop. And you can definitely tell that her and Peter are friends in real life, because they have that kind of unique chemistry that only people who actually know each other for real uh, have, and they're a nice couple... But he's engaged to this other woman, uh, Gail, played by Blanche Baker, who you might recognize from the film uh, Raw Deal. She was uh, Schwarzenegger's wife in that film. She's the one that threw the cake against the wall, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in that movie, he says that line of dialogue that I like, where he's like, you shouldn't drink and bake. Uh, so it was nice to see her again. And she's cute, but she just doesn't, you can tell that, Peter Weller does, isn't really in love with her. She's like getting mad at him, talking to She's not really mad at him, but she's kind of like, what, it's too early? Don't you think it's too early in the morning to listen to heavy metal? And Peter Weller's like, no, this isn't heavy metal. This is Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> and he's like taken aback, like, what do you mean? It's too early to listen to Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> do my dishes. Uh, 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 but anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's not really from this film, that's from Ford Fairlane, but that movie also has Purple Haze in it, so that was kind of a fun uh, reference. Uh, and But yeah, you can tell they don't really hit it off, and Peter Weller's trying to get with her so he can get a job from her father, which is this cushy job where he doesn't have to be a public defender anymore because he's getting sick of the shit, but Patricia Charbonneau gets back with, together with him, and she's reminding him what he's missing, and also reminding him how much he loves his, his job of being a public defender, defending the scumbags, defending the drug dealers, and the sex offenders, and the scum of society. You also have uh, Antonio Fargas, Huggy Bear from Starsky and Hutch. He plays a drug dealer. Uh, um, he's pretty much... He's like the big guy like he's the leader of all these other drug dealers in this town and he's bought off some cops and things like that he plays a character named Nicky Carr and he does a really solid job here because I actually thought it was fairly intimidating and I didn't even think of Starsky and Hutch so he played it straight and he did a good job just shows you that th that actor could actually do more he could play a straight role as a straight drug dealing type a drug dealer type and it didn't have to be like some joke role it doesn't have to remind you of Starsky and Hutch is a completely different character than Huggy Bear now at least that's what I, I I think that's yeah he's mostly he's most well known for playing Huggy Bear you also have Richard Brooks who was Rhino and Shocker and uh, one of uh, Peter Berg's uh, his character's best friends he, he does a solid job here as Michael Jones, who's this drug dealer who, in the beginning of the film, his boombox is playing the Red Hot Chili Peppers song, and there's a cop who comes in and starts giving him shit, and then something happens, the cop is dead, 
And that's why uh, now Michael Jones is on trial. And that's where we have most of the procedural drama stuff is with this character. And Peter Weller's trying to prove to the jury that he's innocent, that he shot the cop in self-defense. Uh, and then this reveals this whole uh, conspiracy, this underground dirty cop, ring of dirty cops. And where the head of them is actually, of all people... I believe it's uh, the, the same actor. It's Thomas G. Waits. It's Windows. Windows from The Thing. From John Carpenter's The Thing. Windows. And he's completely unrecognizable in this. He, he's like... He's got like a 80's mullet. And he's like this huge asshole. And he's got like this New York accent. I'm like... Is that really Thomas G. Waits? And apparently it is. And I'm like, it's, it's actually a great role, a great performance. Uh, it's, it was nice to see him again in something. And I was just surprised. I saw the end credits. I'm like, Thomas G. Waits, Windows? What is Windows doing in this? And, and it is. It's the same actor. And he actually plays a great bad guy. Uh, there's a fun line of dialogue where he's talking to this one guy. And he says that he's, he basically is telling him, if you don't... If you don't calm down, you know, I'm going to send you to jail. I'm going to, and where he, he says the N-word, I'm not going to repeat it. And he says, well, some big black N-word faggot is going to fuck you in the ass so hard that next time you look up your asshole, you're going to see the sky. Uh, so, I, I, I like that line, and I, I think I might have repeated myself there, but I, I, think it's a, I think it's a really fun line of dialogue. So you have him in it, and that's a crazy big role. That's a that's a nice little bit role for uh, Thomas G. Waits. You also have uh, John C. McGinley, who was in Scrubs and a few other things, including uh, Stallone's Get Carter. He's in this as a, in a bit little role. And you have this actor named uh, Daryl Edwards, who plays this character named Doctor Watson, who's like this big, her you know this big burly man who looks like. Jim Brown or Delroy Lindo. That's who I thought it was at first, but it's not him. It's not either of them. And he's actually a pretty memorable character. Like, he, there's a scene where he, like, the cops look like they're going to get him. And, like, he shoots knives out of his sleeves. And then he pulls out this machine gun and starts mowing down people. And it leads to an actual, a really exciting uh, chase with a motorcycle with Sam Elliott and Peter Weller. And there's actually a really cool stunt where Sam Elliott's character is hanging on top of a, a street light. And this is all done. This is actually a real stunt they do. And a stuntman actually hangs on top of the street light and falls down to the ground below. And yeah, it's the type of stunt work that I miss. You don't see that a lot in films nowadays. And one other actor I wanted to throw out there is uh, George Loros, who was also in Apology with Peter Weller. He was a. Uh, Rad Hungate's partner in that film. He plays one of the dirty cops. Now, the film also features a score by Jonathan Elias. I actually really thought this score was as underrated as the film, actually, because I thought it had a lot of mood and atmosphere to the movie. This film has a sort of seedy atmosphere to it, and this score, it's a great work of synth music that reminded me of Angelus in some ways. Now, it's there's one part of it I'm not a fan of. It's the love music, like the score that he's using for a love theme. I'm not really a fan of that. It reminds me a bit too much of the piano music from Howard the Duck. But I, I still like the rest of the score. I, I, it's a moody score, but it fits the film well. Uh, and I, I really do love the end credits song, though. There's a song that plays at the end credits. It's called Looking for Love by Nicky Ryder. And it's a great uh, AOR song that you don't really hear a lot of those songs nowadays either. And that was nice to hear a song like that again. And the reason why is because a lot of people, once again, they'll say it's cheesy. But to me, it's awesome. I love songs like that. Now, Paul Freed also edited the film, and it's edited really tightly. And uh, I also thought James Glickenhouse did a great job directing and writing the film. 
Now, the story could have been a bit better at times, or the script could have been a bit better in some aspects, but, like, I honestly think it needed more action, it needed a few more shootouts, maybe another chase, more scenes with Peter Weller and Sam Elliott, less scenes uh, of this love triangle that's going on between Peter Weller and his fiance and his ex-girlfriend. That really wasn't that interesting to me. And uh, maybe cut down on the poli the procedural bits. I mean, they were fine. I mean, Peter Weller did a great job acting wise, but I just it just didn't really it didn't really grab me. It didn't grab me that much. I, I just want I kept wanting to go back to the stuff with Sam Elliott. Uh, what did grab me though is this excellent action sequence where Sam Elliott is getting chased by some of these dirty cops who are gonna try to silence him uh, through a carnival. And he ends up uh, cornering this one guy on a roller coaster. And this guy thinks he's got Sam Elliott and he's like, fuck you. And Sam Elliott says a great line here. He's like, no, it's actually fuck you, asshole. And what he did is he fucked up the, the cart. The, the thing that you get into when you get on the roller coaster, he fucked that up. He fucked up the controls. So the, then it goes super fast, and then it goes off the rails. And this is a real stunt. You see a guy, he's in the cart, and it goes flying off the rails and crashes to the ground below. That is the type of stuff that James Glickenhaus and Shapiro Glickenhaus would go on to be famous for with their company, PM Entertainment. Uh, after pretty much, I think they started doing PM Entertainment films after this film came out. And I love that stuff. I love that type of stunt work. It's so awesome. And it's the kind of stuff you don't see a lot nowadays. Because they're just doing CGI. Because they either they don't want to risk the stuntman's lives, which I understand, but it's their job. And the, the people who do these stunts, they love doing it. They'd rather die doing what they love doing than not do it at all. And it, it just looks so much better. It, it I mean, come on, when you look at this stunt with the roller coaster, and you try to compare that with shit you see nowadays with CGI roller coasters flying off the rails, there's no comparison. Because it's real. They actually did it. And they didn't have to do it with a budget that's like of millions of dollars, like tens of millions of dollars either. It was a six million dollar budget. Although the budget did show near the end, there was some bad blue screening with the scene where Sam Elliott is hanging on to the, the plane where Antogia Far Fargus and uh, Windows are on there. So he's hanging on onto the plane and then he's shooting at it and he puts a grenade on it and then jumps off and the plane's flying around. You can, you can tell that's, 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 a, that's a blue screen and it's, it's pretty bad, I have to be honest. But uh, the movie ends with a bang. It's a fun bang. Uh, it's pretty absurd, but hey, I love it. I love that kind of thing. I, I wasn't asking for realism here. Although it is, it, it just adds to the fun. It, it adds to the entertainment factor for the movie. It's an over-the-top 80s action movie. Fine with me. I don't care. Uh, it could, it could, it actually could have been even more over-the-top in some aspects. And Peter Weller actually has a great... He, and the movie pretty much ends with another great one-liner where Peter Weller's going up to meet up with Sam Elliott who's fallen in like a river somewhere. And he's like, Richie, I love you, man, but you are definitely new to the planet. <laughs> uh, so that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. These two were great together, and, and it's just a shame that they didn't do another film or, or they weren't in the film together more. Now... And the tone of this kind of reminded me of something like Harley Davidson, The Marlboro Man, and in some aspects, Fatal Beauty, which is another Sam Elliott film that he did with Whoopi Goldberg, which honestly, I actually want to watch again, and I remember that really enjoying that. So who knows, that might be uh, next review as well as Harley Davidson, The Marlboro Man, because I, I like just going, I like, okay, there's something I want to review, something I want to see, then I review it. And then there's de definite genuine passion, and it's not like I'm reviewing something that I don't want to. But uh, I definitely did want to see this. I I'd honestly put this off 
put off seeing this for a while now. I don't know why. I don't know what was wrong with me. You know, it's Peter Weller. You know, it's RoboCop. And it's got Sam Elliott. And I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I picked it up. Because it's a very fun movie. It's entertaining. But like I said, I could use more action. Less of the romance bullshit. Because I just... It slowed the film down. Uh, cut down on the procedural stuff a little bit. And uh, have more scenes with Peter Weller and Sam Elliott. And if, they, if it did that, then I think it honestly could have been a classic. But yeah, I really don't know what else to say about the movie, except there's a few bits of trivia. Um, apparently this film was originally set to be distributed by D Dino D. Laurentini's Entertainment Group before Universal acquired the film after DEG fell under bankruptcy. Um, the film's stunt coordinator, Legend Alan uh, Gibbs, he had planned to do a special rollover car stunt for himself to do, but he got sick of cancer during the making of the film which is too bad. The producers waited for the last minute to shoot the rollover scene, if he would get better, but when Alan Gibbs suddenly died, may he rest in peace, and Jack Gill, who had taken over as stunt coordinator, had to perform the stunt instead. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of it for the trivia. Anyway, yeah, I definitely do recommend this film. If you are a fan of over-the-top 80s action, if you're a fan of Peter Weller, a fan of Sam Elliott, um, if you like the trailer, if you heard some good things about it, definitely give it a look. Uh, and I don't know what else to say about Shakedown, except if I was going to rate it out of five stars. I would give the film four out of five stars. I enjoyed it immensely. It was a really entertaining film. I definitely would say it's in my top five for my all-time favorite Peter Weller movies. And, uh, yeah... I know I, I, I keep using the word gem, but that's what it is. It's a gem. It's a diamond in the rough. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.